As a car enthusiast, whenever I think of the term sleeper, I usually think of the most unassuming cars on the road having way more power and mods than they have any business having at all. But now, it seems like Toyota's got one on their hands. And the best part is, you can buy everything you see here from the factory. I'm a hunter. What's good ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another car review here on the driveway where this week we are out and about in the 2022 Toyota Camry TRD. It's been a couple years since I've driven one of these and getting back into this reminds me just how hot and unassuming of a car this really is. I'm gonna tell you guys, an experience in this is nothing like an SE or an XSE. Sure, it can carry the same engine, the same options, etc. But if you wanna feel a little more exclusive, this is the car that you want. However, if this is the car that you want, well, you need to pony up a bit. This car will set you back around 35 grand as this one sits here. So that does mean it is a little bit more expensive than just the regular models. But then again, the experience is something different too. So in that case, let's make like High School Musical and push this thing to its limit. Sequoia, Tundra, they all have had TRD variants in some form or fashion. But when they decided to put the TRD badge on the Camry, and consequently on the Avalon as well, I was kind of skeptical a little bit. But then I drove one, and now I finally understand why people say that this is definitely the hottest version of the Camry that has ever existed. Of course, when you see the TRD nameplate, the first thing one usually thinks of, especially if you're like me, is performance. How much better can this thing be compared to, say, an XSE? Well, Toyota has fitted a factory catback exhaust, they've given it the TRD suspension, also from the factory, and they've stuffed a three and a half liter dual injected V6 under the hood, which means 301 horsepower, just a hair over 270 foot pounds of torque, it's front wheel drive, and it's put through an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, even more than that V6 growl that you get when you rev this thing to nearly 7,000 RPMs, I'll tell you the one thing I can feel and hear a lot more in here is the road noise. The tires are way for thin on this, and I guess you could say this Camry makes you feel a little more connected to the road. The suspension feels lower, it feels more taut. You can feel every little bump and crevice in the road surface. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people want more of an involving experience with their car. When I drive a regular Camry, say an SE that I could rent from Enterprise, well, I mean, it's not bad, but it just doesn't make me feel like a driver. But in this, it does. The steering is so much tighter. I could take control on the paddles and the transmission responds effortlessly. So to complain about, you know, a slightly harsher ride experience, you know, a little bit rougher suspension, a little bit more road noise, you're kind of missing the point of this car. You know, it's one thing in this day and age where it's easy to fall in love with the low down torque of a turbocharged four cylinder engine. You know, with the instant grunt, you know, torque down in like the thousand RPM range or so. But there's something about a big V6 engine that just. Oh, it just sings. It's so melodic when you put your foot down. And yeah. I did have this car in sport mode most of the time I've been driving it because the reaction is just, it's instant. There's no turbo lag, there's nothing. You put your foot down, 
and as our friends at Goon Squad would say, you let her eat. Believe me, she'll shove your head back in the seat pretty hard. Ooh. Seems we've had a Porsche GT2 join us as well. That sounds way better than this, but man, <laughs> nice little surprise visit. But all right, let's cut to the brass taxes here. $35,000 for what's not that special of a Camry, but at the same time has so much more to offer as a whole package. So the question becomes, do you spend the 35 grand and buy one of these, or do you just go with an XSE, you pay a little bit more, and you end up with still the same horsepower but a little bit more in terms of convenience and luxury well it's kind of up to you but i'll tell you one of my other favorite parts of this car or maybe not so favorite parts is the way it looks now as much as i want to give toyota some serious credit for building a hot version of what is otherwise an ordinary family sedan for some reason I just can't. As much as I love the sound of this thing and the 300 plus horsepower six cylinder in it, I just think that TRD and Toyota could have done a bit better. Not so much with the paintwork though. Normally I see these things in white, black, red, you know, a lot of the typical hot colors, but the cavalry blue on this one, I think it just fits this car in a little bit more of a subtle way, but it just works. It's a little more tuned to someone who has a little more subtle taste like myself. Now, speaking of subtle, the details in here really do prove that what Toyota did is just took an ordinary SE V6 Camry and just just bolted on a few little aftermarket bits like the chin spoiler here on the front bumper you have the side skirts the diffuser at the back and the wing up on the trunk but we'll talk about those individually but like the headlights for example you do have led daytime running lights and of course led high and low beams with the auto high beam assist but your turn signals are still incandescent if this was fully blacked out and made it look maybe a little more smoked i think that would have been a much better uh idea things like the grill it's all black metallic with the exception of the little v there in the middle and also you notice there's no fog lights just these gloss black painted pieces here and another thing for 35 grand i would have at least expected maybe some park assist here across the front or maybe even just in back but there's none of that on this car either now, while you'd think that adding things like all the splitters along the lower half and the wing and all that stuff would make this car a little bit bigger, the TRD is no different in size compared to its normal XSE or even SE siblings. This thing is 192.7 inches long, which means it's still very class competitive in terms of the midsize category. Now, one thing that did grow in size for the TRD and my favorite piece of all on this car, well, at least aside from the engine, are these, the 19 inch TRD specific matte black painted aluminum alloy wheels. We now have almost 13 inch disc rotors up here in the front. They of course are a little bit smaller in the back and of course they are wrapped in some serious rubber 235 40 series Bridgestone tires. Now at 35 grand plus, you would probably expect this Camry TRD, considering it's more expensive than both an SE or XSE base MSRP for base MSRP, that it would have a little bit more in terms of exterior features. But unfortunately, you actually have to pay for a few of those. You want things like your mirrors and your roof painted in the midnight black metallic? Well, that's 500 bucks extra. And of course, you could see more of that black metallic with those elongated side skirts down there in the bottom. But I think that's just so silly. You charge $500 just to have the roof and the mirrors painted black? Um, that's a no for me. They do come standard with blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, so I would expect no less for this price point. And there is no available sunroof on this, even though if you look at it from certain angles, it kind of gives a perspective that maybe it would have a panoramic roof. But again, this is a performance car. It's not about luxury, so don't be expecting a sunroof. If you want that, you can go with an SE or an XSE. And same with the advanced keyless access. There's absolutely nothing special about this, even though I kind of wish they would put the TRD logo on the back. I think that would be, I guess, a little more distinctive compared to just having a key that says Camry and your car says TRD. But nevertheless, you have lock, unlock, trunk panic. You have the releasable key blade that comes out of the bottom. And of course, you have the touch sensitive areas on the doors for locking and unlocking. So I have the key in my hand right now. The car is locked at the moment. I grab the handle. If you want to lock it, there's a little ridge on the front edge of the front handle. So you just hold your finger there. 
Now, if there's truly a part of this TRD Camry that speaks to me more than any other thing, especially as an enthusiast, it's the angle when you look at it from the rear. I've always loved the back end of these Camrys, even on something as normal as like an SE or an XSE. I just think they look so much better than they do at the front. And even more so when you get the TRD. You have the gloss black spoiler up here, which in my last review of this, some of you were wondering why on earth did they put that big dent in the middle of the spoiler? Well, I'll tell you why. Because there's an LED third brake light here, and they didn't want the spoiler blocking that out. So, yeah, it's a bit of a weird styling element. If you wanted it just straight across, well, take the third brake light out and just put a normal pedestal spoiler on there. Nevertheless, there is a little bit more blackout going on here. You've got the blacked out badges for the Toyota badge and the Camry badge. You've got a nice little TRD logo down here on the lower right trunk. As I said, no sort of rear park assist or anything like that, even though you do have a backup camera, which you'll see here in a bit. But my favorite part of all, aside from that diffuser which I think has sort of a hashtag race car look to it with these little fins kind of coming down off the bottom I think that looks so cool of course it all has to do with that TRD catback exhaust now like I said that is a factory feature that is not something that was added to this particular car and you heard it on the drive well this car just sounds amazing <laughs> Now you would think that considering this is based on a humble family sedan that the TRD would be a little bit more practical, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. In comparison to its siblings, there is one big deficit that's been staring me in the face this whole time. Now you can open the trunk using the key or you can use a little button just to the right of the Camry logo. And when you open it up, you're looking at just over 15 cubic feet of cargo volume, which sounds like plenty, right? However, with a normal Camry, like an SE or an XSE, you would see one thing right back here. You notice what's missing? I do. 60-40 split fold seats. This one doesn't have it. And there are no triggers on the inside, on the upper part of the back seats to fold them forward either. It is fixed in place. That is a huge deficit if you're looking for a mid-size sedan that can fit a little bit larger objects in it. Nevertheless, you can still fit everything from suitcases to your daily groceries back here. But considering this doesn't have those 60-40 seats, I would just get an XSE instead. Now you would think that not only at 35 grand, but because this is marketed as the hottest Camry on the market that you can buy, that somehow Toyota would have done something with the interior to make it just as special. And um, unfortunately not. What I'm seeing here is essentially the updated version of a regular Camry SE's interior. Now you can see some sporty bits like the red TRD embroidery. We've got the red seat belts. That's all neat but everything else is just so basic. I mean, you really could pull the interior out of a regular Camry and replace it in here, and it would be exactly the same. Albeit, you know, on the steering wheel, there's some red stitching, but it's leather bound. It's the same exact one as all the others. Same thing with the paddle shifters on the back. They're black plastic, and they kind of have a little bit of a clunky feel to them. The steering column, manual tilt and telescope. I have been catching these red embroidered floor mats, though. I do like that. But also over here to the left of the driver, there is a slew of blank buttons and the basics. Gas door, trunk, traction control, and auto high beam assist. And also one of my favorite little things, a nice little change drawer. But really, as far as specialties go, that's about it. And just as I was expecting, you sit down here in the driver's seat of the TRD, and there is almost nothing aside from the embroidery on the seats and the red-faced gauges and a little TRD logo down here on the shifter that makes you feel like you are driving something much more special than your neighbor's Camry SE. And I mean, in terms of options, there's almost nothing really to speak of in here. Everything is all Toyota and it's everything we've seen before. Advanced radar guided cruise control, the distance sensor, the lane keep assist, the uh, radio buttons on the bottom, including your hands-free voice recognition and Bluetooth, the arrow pad and okay button for the little thin film transistor screen up here in the middle of the cluster. It's all very basic and just, again, not too terribly different 
from your neighbor's regular Camry. Now, some things would be kind of a cool idea, like maybe a little red leather stripe up here at the top of the steering wheel. I know it's a small detail, but considering they put that same thing on the seats, it would be kind of neat to see something right up here. I don't know, just something to make it feel a little more special, but from where I'm sitting, it really doesn't feel anything other than just a normal Camry. Now, if there's one piece of this car's interior that makes it seem way more basic than it needs to be, it is what is right here. A seven inch touchscreen display, which has all the basics. You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Um, you have a backup camera with adjustable guidance lines and even the ability to widen out the camera completely. And that's all fine and dandy. I mean, you know, that's basic stuff. I would expect that in a normal Camry. But things like if you want navigation, Toyota has put the map button in here, but the last time I had this car, it didn't have navigation, but it said map on it. You push it again, navigation app is not installed. Why Toyota, why do you do this to us? You would think that it would have a factory GPS for the price tag. Well, it doesn't. Now there is a bit of a loophole though. If you have your phone plugged up to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in here, you press the map button, it will take you to your Google or Apple powered navigation. That is the only use for that map button. So factory Toyota GPS, non-existent. You want your Google or Apple Maps? Well, at least that button has some kind of use. Everything else is just very standard. You go to the menu, you have audio, Bluetooth telephone, Intune 3.0 app suite, the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, general information and setup. Now, as much as I wanna keep giving this system so much grief, it does have one saving grace. With this test car of ours, we have the TRD upgrade package for an extra like 1500 bucks or so. And what it gives you is a nine speaker JBL audio system. And I've heard a lot of JBL systems before. This one is certainly no different. And it's a heck of an upgrade over the standard six speaker system that you'd get without that package. Now, if you're still expecting more convenient comforts like heated seats or a dual zone climate control system, maybe even a wireless charger, unfortunately, this car doesn't have any of that. The single zone climate control, all as basic as you could be. The heated seat buttons would normally maybe be here or down here somewhere. None of that is to be found. You want a wireless charger? Oh, well, there's a USB. And uh, what if it's in here? Well, um, nope. That's just black plastic. So convenience wise, yeah, the screen may be small. Yeah, it has the standard smart co smartphone connectivity and a decent sound system, but you want anything else to kind of help set the mood for that? Well, unfortunately it just doesn't exist. Okay, so aside from the insultingly basic features list, let's not forget this still is a Toyota Camry underneath. So if per se you want to have some people in the back, well, at least it's a decently spacious back seat. I have that driver's seat exactly where I want it at over six feet tall as a driver, and it's still reasonably roomy. The step-in height is not too bad. You don't have all the creature comforts though. You want a center armrest with cup holders? Well, forget it, it's not there. You want things like USB chargers and you know a place to put your phone? Well, at least one of those is there. And there are some USB chargers up there in the, um, in the center console, but as far as the ones like you'd find kinda in that lower section there, well, they're non-existent either. Stepping in though, you can see I can step in with relative ease. I don't need to duck my head that much. And you actually have an indented headliner back here, except if you're the person sitting in the middle seat. So your outboard passengers might be fine, but you might crush somebody that's a little taller if you're sitting here in the middle. Now, would I say that this is a real road trip car, you know, with all the features you could want if you wanna plug in your phone on a long distance? Well, no. But is it a Camry-sized back seat with at least a decent amount of comfort? Yeah, it is. And with all that in mind, this now concludes our review and drive of the 2022 Toyota Camry TRD. As much grief as I gave this thing for being way too basic for its 35 grand price tag, 
it's still not a bad vehicle overall. Over 300 horsepower, six cylinders, and just the idea that you're driving something a little bit more exclusive than your neighbor's Camry SE. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this review or perhaps you learned something today, give this video a thumbs up. And also, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button down below because trust me, it is beneficiary in the end for both of us. At the end of the day, though, you guys know where my credit goes, right back to Toyota USA for lending us this Camry TRD and many more other cars in the past to have for weeks at a time. But at the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. I'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody, and stay safe.